And after 39 games, Western United have come home. Hello and welcome for the very first time to the regional football facility in Tarnit as Western United take on the Newcastle Jets in round 20 of the Liberty A-League. Well, despite going 3-1 down to second place Sydney, Western have guaranteed their finals berth for the second time in their existence. It's a different story for the Jets, who are teetering on the edge of finals qualification. I'm joined today by Australian football legend Kath Canulli. Kath, will it be a welcome home for United, or will the Jets spoil the party to keep their finals hopes alive? I think this game's going to have it all, Georgia. Newcastle Jets are looking to be into that top six, and the Western United team here at the opening game of their home facility, what a better place to play football. But they will be also looking for a top place spot in this league. And let's have a look to how they will line up. So big injury news this week with Chloe Legazzo facing an extended sit on the sidelines with a hip injury and Adriana Taranto unfortunately doing her, her ACL in training midweek. Avani Prakash will have her first start in green and goalkeeper Catherine Larson drops to the bench with Alyssa Deloste starting. And for the Newcastle Jets, after their 2 0 loss to Melbourne City last week, only the one change in the lineup with Zoe Karapiedis dropping out of the matchday squad and Josephine Wilson rejoining the starting 11. Melina Ayres makes her first matchday appearance since the 28th of January. So, Kath, a bit of a reshuffle in attack for Weston. Who is your eye on today? My eye on, is on Avani Prakash. She's a young star. She's making her starting debut today for Western United. We know what she's had to do to get there. We know that she's trialled for multiple A-League clubs, especially in Sydney, and she made the move to Western United as, as a scholarship player. Mark Torcaso had plenty of belief in the young star, and it's great to see that Cat Smith is calling up upon her today. And how important is the expansion with more clubs in the league to allow these young players to develop and have the talent to shine? It's huge, you know, we, we know with Western United a couple of years ago they weren't even in this league, so Avani wouldn't even have had the opportunity to go and play in the A-League women, and we can see off the success of the young Matildas in the Asian Cup, they just most, recent, most recently uh, beat Korea 1-0 uh, last night to become third in the Asian Cup, which is fantastic, and this is what we need for this league to, to make sure that plenty of our youngsters can play in this league and play regular minutes. And there she is, standing tall, standing very proud next to, you know, Hannah Keane, the Golden Boot winner from last season as well. So great to see her starting today. It is great to see her starting, and she's not very tall, and she looks, looks even smaller beside Hannah Keane. Not too far off the height of the mascot. Of course, she's only 17 years of old, so young to be doing so well in this competition. And talking about players who've been doing so well this season, you can't think about the Newcastle Jets without thinking of Serena Bolden. How important has she been for the Jets? She's been Newcastle Jets' key signing this season. Since she's come, they have just turned around this season. She just lights up that team. You can see the passion that she plays with. She's come, she's played 14 games, 11 goals, four assists. She has the most shots on target per match for the Newcastle Jets. And she's just a pleasure to watch. She's, she's fantastic to have in our league. And just her presence is just something, something special for the Newcastle Jets. And I'm sure she's going to want to put them into that top six this season. She truly is, but, you know, eyes on finals, potentially eyes on the golden boot as well. Absolutely. She definitely has that in her sight. She's sitting second behind uh, Michelle Heyman. Thankfully for her, it looks like that she might be able to play finals football, but she's definitely got one eye on that golden boot as well. And Georgia Girardello will be the referee in charge of today's game. The assistant referees, Delphina Shakespeare and Claire Green. And the fourth official is Adam Vavka. And final words being spoken there. You can see Cass Davis with the armband, crucial part of that Newcastle side. And Kat Smith, the coach for Western United, she's been on a great run, had those three wins in February. She spoke this week about the have a facility like this one here at the Western, uh, the regional football facility is so important for football out West. And not just the boys and girls who want to play professional football, but also administration, uh, administrators, coaches, and all the governments of staff who are involved in football. 100%. Kat Smith knows what it's all about. She was at a, a club in Western Sydney Wanderers that has a home of football. It just makes all the difference.
And Ryan Campbell, he took over the, the reins in January, also nominated for Coach of the Month for February. Two wins, one draw and four losses, and we'll be getting underway here for the very first time. Mini Barbieri, a player who knows football in Victoria very well. And Georgia Giridale blows her whistle. The Newcastle players taking a knee to start off this game. Looks to be, see some protests of some sort. But play now underway. Very, very interesting there from the Newcastle Jets. I'm sure we'll get a bit more of what that was all about whether it's in halftime or post-match, but let's get this football on the way and let's see some great football in the Liberty A-League. And Grace Ma there to mop out the loose ball. Been crucial for Western United so far. And unable to control the loose ball. Throwing. So Vicky, back out to the steadiness in Ma. Blanish to Taranto. Mini Barbieri playing close attention there. Jets thrown. But great to see as well how full the stadium is. For heaps of Western View United fans here having this brand new purpose built facility two years to the day they started construction. Now playing here for the first time. Such a fantastic achievement for such a young club, Western United. They'd be so excited to have this game here this afternoon. I remember when Western Sydney Wanderers opened the, the football facility there and how exciting it was not only for the players but for all the staff that were involved in it and it just plays such a key part for for all the teams medwin playing that right wing position attempts the shot goes for a really early shot in the game western united really want to get onto the board here newcastle now to try and play it out from the back allen out wide papadopoulos giving chase Lauren Allen still with the ball at her feet. Passes back to Bolden, but intercepted by Ma. Keane. And Medwin has the legs and the speed to burn. Medwin looking for Hyena. Ball flashes just behind her. Two great opportunities to start this match. Absolutely, they've started really, really strong, Western United, and they probably know exactly what it means to them being at their home of football here. And what a fantastic run there for Amy Bedwin. Medwin, she's actually made a great run in behind and put a beautiful ball in. It's just unfortunate that no one could get on in behind it. Newcastle now. That wide to Bowman. Bolden passes back. Opportunity comes begging. Shouts in the box, but... Weston stands strong. Not out of danger just yet. Prakash out to Medwin, but just too much on the ball. So both teams looking threatening early on in this game. Pryor involving her goalkeeper in Nino. Dangerous areas at play. Weston look threatening. Pryor running through the center. Bowman. Out wide to Allen. Sets it up for Bolden. And, is, uh, and an early goal scored for Newcastle Jets. And Libby Copas Brown adds her fourth for the season. And just like that, they are on the board. What a beautiful finish by Libby Copas-Brown and a great delivery by Serena Bolden. 
I've seen Libby on the training pitch. We had her at the Western Sydney Wanderers, and her te technique is phenomenal. But what a great ball in here by Serena Bolden, and the technique there from Libby Kirpus Brown, absolute world class. And just the teamwork here from the Jets as well. You can see how much they're actively looking for each other. That's her fourth goal for the season. Three, she also has two assists to her name as well. So, Weston down at home at the first ever time they're playing at this stadium. We'll go over the top. Deloste comes out to collect. Weston now on the back foot, Keane. Knocked off. Giordano brings it back for the foul on Keane. Bit slow to get up, but held up in the end by Cern. Turn over the top, but just too much on it for Kiwa Hayeda. And able to keep the ball in play second time. Umi Bariri pushed to the edge. Quick throw and taken, but taken too many steps onto the referee. Sometimes you can get away with them, and Mindy Barbieri there just being called back by the referee. Is it regain possession? Ma. Looking for CERN, two of them have played every single minute this season so far. Foul conceded on the end by Dundas. Awkward landing for CERN. She's just taken a couple of extra heavy touches there and she just gets herself into a little bit of a battle there with, with Dundas. Still yet to get back on her feet. Of course, quite warm in Melbourne today as well. So very frantic opening minutes in this game so far. That early goal from the Jets. Would this be an opportunity for Weston to have a quick chat and reset? I think always when you see the break in play, you can see here with Alana Cern just landed badly on her hip. And she looks like she's in quite a lot of pain there. She's just stayed down. She's she's holding on to it onto her hip but I'm sure just a little breather in, in play gives everybody a little bit of time to settle. We're seven minutes into the game. It's been very frantic from both ends. Western United playing at their new home of football. Got a lot to play for. They want to get in that, that top spot. They're in the hot seat and then you've got Newcastle Jets on the other hand that are, that are fighting for a top six spot. Football doesn't get much better than this Georgia. And it's been a great round of football so far, of course. This is potentially the weekend that we could see some teams eliminated for the first time. But as it stands prior to this game, uh, Western United, 35 points. Sydney were playing Wellington in a very tumultuous game. There's lots of goals there. There was this Melbourne derby happening just 50-odd minutes away from this game taking place this afternoon as well. So huge, huge matches in the context of this league and this season for who will make their way into finals. Long ball over the top for Keane. Jets playing out from the back. Keen ever imposing threat. That's a great press there by Western United to be able to regain the ball. But once they do get possession of their ball, they've got to be more clinical in that front third and, and make some sort of use of the opportunities that, that they do gain. Siviki.
Paul being headed back and forth in the midfield. And quick look at the possession at the moment. Newcastle 65% to Weston's only 35%. Newcastle really the one saying this is our home, not yours at the moment. You could see a couple of times there when yes, Western United have picked up a couple of free kicks. They've just honestly just given away possession so cheaply. They've just got to calm the, the nerves down and get back to basics. Medwin trying to make it that Morris the ball from Papadopoulos, but won back immediately by the Jets. Allen now on the run. Ryan Allen. Pushing out wide. In the end. Taranto coming in to win it back and using her body to try and win the throw for her team. Papadopoulos back to CERN. Keen really in the wars at the moment. Foul conceded by the Newcastle captain, Cass Davis. You always know you're going to have a battle on your hands when you're coming up against Cass Davis. She's one of the toughest players that I've ever played against in the Liberty A-League. She's just such a tough opponent. And those 50-50 balls, she's always up for that battle. Kiwaheda on the run. Turning in, well, Wilson inside out. And Zavigi trying to put their hands on Pryor, but Weston's attack... Goes no further. Turn play through the center to Taranto. Ball over the top to Prakash. Again, they've done great there in, in their press. They've regained possession there. They've kept the ball in a couple of passes and then giving away that ball cheaply in that final third. They've just got to be a little bit more calm once they get into those areas and maybe go back to basics and start to hit feet and start to get a bit of a flow and effect from the game and see how they go from there. Grace Mar uncharacteristic error there, just didn't get a control of the ball. Bolden. Dundas. The shot doesn't really trouble. They'll all say too much. Another ball over the top now. Hayata. Turns on play to Vicky. Flirting with the edge of the box. And Weston. Go back, just that 54% passing accuracy at the moment for Western United, 79% for Newcastle. You can see here just off those stats with Western United just giving away that, that ball just a little bit cheaply at the moment. They've just got to, again, get it back to basics, hit feet, and just wait for the game to start to turn in a little bit of momentum for them. Ball is aimed for Med when she wins it back. He's got Keane there, goes for the low shot. He's had a couple now opportunities now. Amy Medwin making the most of her return to football after doing her ACL last year. So Vicky calling for help. Papadopoulos and Allen pushing the back. But Allen wins possession. To Vicky, to Taranto. A little flicked on header from Bauman. Falls in favour for Medwin. Medwin again. Tending the cross to Hayata. Pull falls away from goal. Prakash there to mop up any loose ball. Medwin once more. Spilled by Nino. But an opportunity now for Savicki. Cleared off the line by Pryor. Danger not just over yet, but my goodness, what a run of attack there from Weston. But Jets had the answer every single time. 
What a great ball in there from Amy Medwin. She puts it into that dangerous area. Nino just can't get her hands to it. And how great is that by the youngster, Prakash, putting her body on the line to try and get that follow-up there. But Western United just can't make much of it. Barbieri. Looking for an option. Off the back of Vonich. Bolden. Waiting for the ball to come to her. We'll play with Hoban. Jets just keep possession, just keep it in there, attacking third. Wilson, the long throw. Ball comes back to her in the end. Curtis Brown on the score sheet for today already. As it stands, that one goal, the difference between the two sides. Well, in the end, pushes out for a throw. Newcastle with the quick throw once more, keen to keep the game in play as much as possible. Well, flick from Barbieri. And fouls one itch. Definitely known for her ability on the dead ball. Curtis Brown and Keane. Keane's won it. Some words there between Georgia Girardello and Libby Curtis Brown. Final warning before a yellow card comes out. Of course, they know how dangerous Hannah Keane is and especially how she uses her body to roll and that's a foul there for Libby Copus Brown every day of the week. But Hannah Keane's done very, very well to hold her off there and to be able to draw that foul. Because to be honest, that, that free kick from Grace Ma, it's just gone to no one. No one's even contesting it. You were on the Western United Sydney game last week where they went down to 3-1. Kind of Western United's kind of bogey team, so to say, at the moment. They haven't really had any positive results against Sydney. Is that... Uh, do you think this performance so far, they're still having the hangover from last week's results or just haven't been able to find the rhythm as of yet? I think they're just sort of not finding their rhythm at the moment. I think they've started a lot stronger than what they did against Sydney. The energy in the first 10 minutes in this game, I, th I thought was fantastic for Western United. It's just unfortunate that they've gone one nil down and then mentally that's always, it always plays a bit of a part on players' minds. But they've just got to get back to basics here. They're getting free kicks. They're just giving away possession cheaply. They just need to get themselves on the ball. They've got plenty of players here. I love this from Grace Marnia, just changing it up a little bit, playing the keeper and, you know, trying to keep that possession of the ball. Again, once again, just giving it away just too cheap. Just get the ball under control, get the rhythm of the match, get yourself into a good, good place and then slowly, slowly add the building blocks from there. Newcastle retain possession in that attacking half. Miscommunication there between their players. As it stands with the results in other games, Sydney have gone top of the ladder as well. 
That one point in front of Weston. Sands Newcastle still sitting in seventh on 24 points. Western Sydney Wanderers. And it's Amy Medwin now. Amy Medwin all to herself. And the ball spills over the line. And a massive moment for the young star and her return to football. Her first goal ever in the Liberty A League. 25th appearance. A very well deserved goal there for Amy Medwin. She's done really well. She's been fantastic in this first half. She's been winning all her 50 50 battles. She's done so well there to get in front of Bauman. Takes her touch. I was actually a bit scared there. I thought she was going to square it up there across goal. And I'm like, shoot, take it towards goal. And she's done super fantastic in, in that finish there. And she puts her team back in this match. And huge in the context of the game, huge in the context of the season. Amy Medwin, she's been hungry all day. And Avani Prakash, did she potentially get the last touch of the ball? And what a great follow-up there from Avani Prakash. She's been everywhere in this game and those follow-ups are key and she's put her body on the line to make sure that that ball goes into the back of the net. Newcastle, not to be undone. Serena Bolden in a threatening area. Bolden to Hoban, blocked. Allen over the top and an immediate response from the Newcastle Jets. A stunning curling effort and my goodness, don't turn your eyes away from this game for one second. What a beautiful goal by Lauren Allen. I just knew when it left her foot that that was going to go into the back of the net. Beautiful, beautiful goal there by Lauren Allen. They don't get much better than that. You can't give anybody time and space in that, that type of the area there. And she's hit that ball first time and she's hit it so sweetly. An immediate response from the Jets. They are looking for that win today, aren't they? They sure are. They know exactly what it means to the team. They know that they need to win today to stay in that, that top six spot and keep fighting for it for the season. So, Medwin, 20. Allen, 21. We're back with that lead with the Jets. Now, Weston, the team trailing, weren't able to enjoy that goal for too long at all. I feel like the intensity of this game has just risen astronomically in the past five minutes. Any chance that either team can have, they're taking it. You have to love the energy from both these teams, and that's what this point of the competition gives you. And there's two teams still fighting for spots in this competition. It just makes it all more exciting. Prakash getting sandwiched. Work there done by Pryor. Home and out wide, spotting the run of Allen, but Papadopoulos there to cause an end to that attacking run. Hannah Keane now, options in front of her, options to the side, finds Medwin. Medwin takes her time, crosses in, awkward landing, but Keane does the most of it before it's cleared away. And now Mindy Barbieri on the run. Out wide. Bolden's calling for the ball, but the run from Hoban put to an end by Ma. The two number 18s battling against each other. No, quite hot conditions. Already three goals in this game. Neither team really looking to restart play too quickly. They know that once that ball starts moving, it's end-to-end -end stuff here in Tani. Ball from Hoban to Bolden. Pull down in the end. Ma, a little bit of frustration there, Kath? There's always frustration in games like this. It's end-to-end -end action at the moment and bold in there even when she picked up this ball in, in this area it just pulls her back there she does she's a winner bold and she'll do anything to win bolden out wide to dundas dundas now ball delivered in by allen but no one there to help out but Offside flag was up in the end. <laughs> D 
the last day. Flashes past the green bodies in the center. Davis. Looking for that long option. Barbieri's there with speed to burn. Just missed connections from Weston when they're trying to move down the pitch. And lots of chats from the crowd as well about which direction they thought the referee should be appointing for that throw in. Hoban. Trying to find Bolden, headed up in the air. Soon left it for a keeper, but foul conceded there by Allen. Great little ball in there. You can see Serena Bolden, not sure what's around her. And Lauren Allen just goes in to challenge the keeper. What well, doesn't look like there was that much in it, to be honest. Seven fouls for Newcastle, none for Western United so far. Touched on briefly that they have conceded the most fouls of any team in the league. I'm kind of on display so far this afternoon. You can just see the way that Newcastle Jets are pressing. They're pressing, they're trying to curve their runs to deny Western United. Stolen ball, opportunity now, Bolden flashes wide. As I was saying, they're pressing, they're, they're trying to deny them to be able to play in the, into those wide areas and they're looking to put, pick up this ball off this press here and Sophie Hoban's done fantastic there to take her touch past, past Grace Ma. Just the ball shouldn't have been for Bolden there, should have been in for Allen. Booted away by Keane. Coming there to mop up the loose ball. Taranto tries to stay on her feet, but Lauren Allen, can she go for it again? <laughs> Every single time Newcastle Jets are given an iota of space, they're trying to make the most of it. They sure are, and Lauren Allen then just picks up the ball in such a dangerous area, and she's just rushed it there. Newcastle Jets picks up the ball here. They've keep possession. They hit Lauren Allen. She's one-on-one -on -one there with Alana Cern. She could have taken that ball further in and, and gone all the way. The last time these two sides faced each other in December, it was 4-2. Are we in for another goals fest today? Kiwaeda put to an end by the flag. Been a great talent for Weston, played in Calder United, their affiliated NPLW side in Victoria last season, been playing pretty consistent minutes as the season builds on. The back of play, Stern takes a tumble. Looks like Vonage is down from Copus Brown. So she will go into the book this time. She sure will. It's a bit of a tough challenge there on, on Tyler Vanich. She's just a little bit late into that tackle, but you can see that she's shown a little bit of remorse there on, on Tyler Vanich. On the score sheet for the first goal we saw this afternoon, scored in the fifth minute. Now into the book as well with that yellow card. The challenge there. Very late there by Libby Copas Brown. I think she she realised that in the end, but it just shows the energy and, and the willingness from this Newcastle Jets team to be able to get a result here today. And it's a tough one in these conditions. We always know trying to play in this heat, they're stopping here for for drinks breaks. Quite warm in Melbourne. Back to the restart of play. Plenty of talking points, and we haven't even hit the 30th minute mark of this game. Three goals, a yellow card, plenty of fouls, plenty of opportunities. 
It sure has been. And again, we spoke about how both teams have got a lot to play for here this afternoon. And it just goes to show when there is so much to play for and how exciting this football can actually be. And both teams have really given it everything this afternoon. And in these conditions, it's always great to see that, you know, there's still plenty of fantastic football on display. Ball over the top from Taranto. Met once more by the Newcastle defenders. Prakash streaming through. Comes off Copas Brown in the end. And a yellow card for Mindy Barbieri as well. So two quite early yellows for the Jets. Those two need to be really careful here. You don't want to be losing a player in such a crucial match. And both those players, especially Libby Copas Brown in the position that she plays in, she's always getting into those battles. So now she's got to be a little bit more cautious for the rest of the game. They've had the one red card so far this season. Alex Hun in that first game in the F3 derby. Long ball in. Punched away from Nino. Opportunity still beckons for West and Savicki. Curtis Brown clears low in the end. Ma out wide to Medwin. She's been dangerous all afternoon. Medwin just dancing on the ball, trying to wait for an opportunity to come begging. Bauman finds the feet of Papadopoulos. Weston looking for that switch. Which long ball down, headed on by Keane. Medwin finds the ball in her path. Ops for that left footed shot. Finds Keane instead. And Hannah Keane in a tight area. And over the top in the end by Kiwa Haeda. Plenty of build up play. There sure is, and Medwin's just been on fire today. She finds Hannah Keane there in the box. She just wasn't sure. She tries to bring it back onto her left foot, and then Hayata gets that shot away. Five shots apiece for both teams. Weston and Newcastle, 2-1 is the score at the moment. Vladich crossed in. And Weston, that little bit more accurate in front of goal. So far, 80% shots on target. Newcastle, just the 40. But they've got the two goals. That's the important one in the end. Prakash back out to Ma. That's a short passes before they look for the long one. Over the top from Cern. Met by Wilson. Vlanich through the center. Finds Keane. Amy Medward just on side. Off target in the end. But another strong effort from Amy Medwin. It sure was. She's been on absolute fire this game. She's had the energy from, from the beginning. She gets a great ball in here from Hannah Keane. I would have loved to see her cut that back onto her left foot there. She would have been right on goal, but she just takes a little bit of a heavy touch there and just doesn't get that, that shot off on target. Hayeda. Low ball. Savicki. Out through Medwin once more. Why not? She's been looking good. Misplaced pass to Papadopoulos. Yeah, 
Sometimes we see that players make those forward runs, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you should play them. Sometimes that could be a decoy run where you can actually then change the point of attack and be able to get the ball in the box or try and look for someone else to try and switch the ball out. Hits the deck once more. Haida passes back to Ma. Keane taps it on into the direction of Hayeda. The run is there. Medwin rises high, but out for what will be a corner. Medwin does really, really well there in that instance. Great ball in here by Hayeda. Medwin up for the challenge there against Bowman and done well to earn her team a corner here. First corner of the game for Western United. Ella J. Vlanich to take. Vlanich, Nino tries to palm it away. Not out of danger just yet. Taranto keeps it in. Another cross. And it's spilled. Scrappy in the box. But pushed away. Weston still attack. Ball from Savicki falls to the feet of Copas Brown. She's waiting for support from her players. Papadopoulos able just to get in. Find Medwin. And now the attack is going on for the other team. Medwin, another delivery. Keane just flashes. Beyond her. But another massive opportunity for Weston. A great opportunity there from, from Weston United. A great ball in by Medwin. How Hannah Keane doesn't get her head on the end of this cross is beyond me. But what a great ball in and a great opportunity there for the Weston United team. She scored twice from headers this season. We know about her ability to find the back of the net. And plenty more opportunity to come. Medwin has been delivering as much as she can. Papadopoulos trying to find that central run from Keane. First touch, too heavy, still keeps control of the ball. Medwin now flashes past the heads. Players in the box just didn't have that aerial ability to get to it. Barbieri. Finds Hoban. Hoban dancing on the ball. And Vlanich pulled down once more. It's a little bit unnecessary there by Hoban. You've got Vlanich there in a position where she's facing back and she's just tried to take take her on 1v1 and she doesn't need to draw that foul there. Dundas, out wide to Bauman. Allen, looking for that run. Dundas just couldn't get the speed behind it today. to play from Weston. Wilson just getting in front of Hayata where it counts, but Hayata tenacious on the ball. Some back and forth play from Newcastle.
Garmin pushing forward, finds Bolden, immediately pings it back, but Melissa Taranto first in front. Soon, looking out wide for an option, finds that in Papadopoulos. And a little bit of a stumble there from Nino. In a really dangerous situation for Weston. Uh, luckily had enough time to recover. Well, back flick from Barbieri, but to no avail, the ball had already gone out of play. Keen. The intention of Medwin. Flashes past a whole heap of players. Lots of shouts from the crowd. Allen now. She's got the speed. Attempting to beat Papadopoulos, who grabs at her hand. And in the end, the foul is given. Papadopoulos goes in the book as a result. She sure does. La Alan had her there for pay. She's just gliding past her. Papadopoulos knows there's not much else that she can do there other than pull her back for that foul there. And it's a deserved yellow card for Papadopoulos. She just didn't have much else. Who will step up for the Jets now? I've seen. Quite a few goals scored from them recently. We know that Mindy Barbieri is a set set piece specialist. She loves the ball in and around the box here and she'll definitely back herself in this situation. But just whether she goes up for this little dink for the likes of Tash Pryor or Josie Wilson there or whether she actually goes for the shot herself and actually backs herself. She scored two goals this season. The most she's had in her career in a singular season since her first season when she also scored two. Could this be an opportunity for Barbieri? Barbieri! In the end, not too much danger. Looked more like a cross than a shot. You could see what she was trying to do with her technique there. She's trying to bend it into that top top corner where she just didn't have enough power behind that shot and from that distance you need a little bit more power behind you Bolden Hanning Dundas question Winning back the ball. Just a couple more minutes of regulation time to play in this first half. Prakash out wide to Vlanich. getting a crucial little foot to it where it counts. Now Papadopoulos, Allen right behind her. So Vicky trying to make sure her team wins the throw or keeps possession. Hayata. Looking for the cross, low delivery, blocked immediately. Kath, just minutes left of this first half. What do you think is going to be said in the sheds at half time? If the score stays the way it is, Newcastle Jets are in 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 full control here. They know that with this 2-1 scoreline at the moment, they can control the rest of the second half. But I'm sure Western United will be looking to come out firing in the second half and look to get some sort of equaliser back and, and get their team back into the game.
Building slowly from defense. Newcastle win back ball, Barbieri. Hoban, surrounded by Green. Ball stays in play. Pryor, with close attention from Keane. Crucially. And it's some groans from the cat out there, thinking that their team deserves the throw. I love it, both teams, hands in the air, calling that it's their, their ball and that's the way that's the way it goes on, on the pitch. But Hannah Keane there not happy that Western United didn't get that throw there. Barbieri. Medwin just knocked off her feet a little bit from Allen. Prior now in the foot race. Up for the safe. Pass back to the keeper. Three minutes of stoppage time will be added on in this first half. Plenty of action in it as well. Davis just copying a loose ball to the head. Play continues on. Back through the center. Copus Brown taking as much time and patience as she can. Energy just slowly dissipating as we enter the final minutes of this first half. Looks like both teams want to keep it as is before you know, regrouping for the second half. I think you can see here just in the Newcastle Jets, we know Libby Copas brown there. She's screaming at her goalkeeper just to slow it down and regroup. She knows for her team going into the sheds at 2-1 up, it's, it's a great result for them. And it's just about managing the game. And we know, especially in these last five minutes of any half, it's always a dangerous time where people or players start to lose their concentration. You know how dangerous Weston is, especially in that... Second half, Stubbage Dive scored many of their goals last season and this season there. Planet struggling for options, goes long to Keane. Uses it ahead, but directs it to the path of no one in particular. Fancy on the ball. Copus Brown and Wilson trying to bundle her out of the way. And Georgia Giridolo blows the whistle. So plenty happened in that first half. We saw three goals. Newcastle opening the scoring at the fifth minute before a reply in the 20th from Amy Medwin, but with not even a minute after that, they were back in front with a stunning curling effort from Laura Allen. And as it stands at halftime, it is Western United 1, Newcastle Jets 2. And let's have a look at the goals that have made up this first half. What a great ball in behind here for Serena Bolden and a great cross. And again, a fantastic finish there by Libby Copas Brown. The technique was absolutely beautiful, but the ball was even better here from Serena Bolden. Massive moment for this season to keep their finals hopes alive. Western United hit back with Amy Medwin. She makes a great, great run here. She wins that battle there to be able to get herself into a good position. And Ivani Prakash there just to follow up and what a great moment here for Amy Medwin to be able to score her first goal of this league and the way she's done it she's had a fantastic first half and just great to see her on this score sheet.
said she feels stronger in her return, but that goal didn't stand for too long at all. It sure did, and what a great finish here by Lauren Allen. The way she hits this first time, she just absolutely puts this into the top right-hand corner there, and there's not much that, that Western United can do with that one, but Newcastle Jets puts them back in front. So lots of back and forth across the ground. Let's have a look at the statistics. Seven shots for the Jets to just six for Western. Foreign target for Western, however, Quite the big one, really, besides the goals, is the foul count. Newcastle sitting on nine to just the one for Western United. Of course, that one resulted in a yellow card, so if you're going to do it, go all out from Stacey Papadopoulos. But plenty, plenty more action to come. This was a very thrilling first half. Both these seasons, on the very dependent on the result in this game, will be back for the second half very shortly.
Well, it's been a tumultuous affair in Tiny. Western United in their first ever home game in their purpose-built stadium. Currently down 2-1 to the Newcastle Jets. They're making their way back on the pitch, but lots of goals in that first half. Of course, Newcastle opening the scoring before the, the Western were able to equalise and immediately the Jets were back on board and back in the lead. Some very exciting play here. I'm joined by Kath Canoli. Kath, welcome back to the second half. Thank you, Georgia. I'm sure it's going to be an exciting second half. You can see here the opening goal by the Newcastle Jets. Serena Bolden, great cross in for the great strike from Libby Copas Brown. And then you can see Papadopoulos here gets Amy Mendelwood in behind and she wins her duel here up against Bauman. She takes a touch into great, great position here and just a strike into the back of the net. And Ivani Prakash making sure that that ball hits the back, back of the net. And then Newcastle's done fantastic to be able to get get another one back in and Lauren Allen there what a beautiful strike to put the Newcastle Jets ahead in the first half some real exciting play here today so far final words from the Western crew before they make their way back on the pitch but of course Serena Bolden she's she's second in the lead in the golden boot but of course it's so many different options for the Jets as well in terms of who can score as we've seen Copas Brown and Allen mopping up those loose balls to get the goals in this game so far there sure has been for the Newcastle Jets there have been a few players that can put the ball into the back of the net but one player here Amy Medwin she's been fantastic in this first half we've seen last week she was asked to play as a fullback this week she's coming on to start as as a winger there and you can see three shots today six crosses so she's trying to deliver as well for Hannah Keen in the box but also has got a, her first goal the Liberty A League as well which is fantastic to see and she's returned from a horrific injury as well and Hannah Keen gets us underway right start here in Tarnayton Prakash going in that slide tackle immediately that is the intensity we will come to expect in this game petered off a little bit towards the end and tried to clear it instead pushed it into the feet of Papadopoulos so Newcastle with a throw Barbieri from distance but doesn't trouble Daloste at all you can see here Mindy Barbieri's done really well to read that that ball coming in and she's just pinched that and, and given great strike there on on Dallas Day making sure that she's awake for this second half prior struggling for where to go next ups for Nino Weston pressing forward And Barbieri refuses that to not let that ball come to her. Does everything in her power. Finds Dundas. Served with a well-timed tackle. Saviki out to Hayata. Keane. That long ball heading towards goal. And Saviki from distance. So both teams with an attempted shot to start off the second half. That's a big problem that Western United are going to have if Keane starts to venture out wide to pick up that ball. And you can see in that instance when she does get the ball into, the, into that area, there's not many people there to be able to pick something up. And that strike there by Saviski there, again, there wasn't much options there for her. She'd had nothing really in front of her. So... She backs herself to, to have a strike from that distance. It will be the foul on Medwin there rather than a throw in.
Hassan. Long ball. Another look at that foul count. Just the one for Weston. 11 for Newcastle so far. He's really, Newcastle trying to get stuck in to win the ball. Curling pass just behind Vlainich, but able to recover. Long ball in for Keane. But Tash Price standing tall where it matters. course, Mini Barbieri and Copus Brown are on yellow cards, so have to be careful with that foul count. How we've seen so far. Papadopoulos also in a yellow for West End. Ball lifted in. Kane drops Nino on the ground, flashes past a whole heap of West End players. Nino able to recover, but could this be the moment now for Newcastle? Right. Windy conditions here in Melbourne's West. A quick look at that last shot. Another great cross there in by Amy Medwin. Hannah Keane just can't get her head on top of it. But again, you can see good numbers in the box there by Western United and, and the youngster there, Navani Prakash, putting herself into those dangerous areas and making sure she's in the right place at the right time and putting her body on the line as well. Copus Brown just requiring some treatment. So players will have an early respite in this in the second half. You can see here in, in the cross from Amy Medwin here and Hannah Keane comes up for the header and Libby Copus Brown just looks like she's landed a little bit awkwardly there. Couple of clashes of bodies in that play as well. Looks to be that left. So able to get up. Good news, but see Cass Davis having a long chat with her goalkeeper. And really great turnout today for Western United. You know, really building phenomenal fi uh, facilities in Melbourne's West. So great opportunity for these players and these fans to have a place to call home in weeks to come. Of course, final home game for them this season, but with the way the ladder is looking at the moment, they could have a home final in a couple of weeks' time. They sure can, and this home is fantastic for the whole club, and it's great for the community. It's great for... The, the community of Tarnet to have somewhere to be able to go and watch football and to be part of something bigger than, than just football. We know anyone that's part of the football family, they know that sometimes we spend more time at football than we do with our own family. So it's credit to Western United, all the hard work they've done in this league since they've been here and to be able to get this facility up and running, it's a credit to all of them behind the scenes. Keen, delivery in. Someone able to make the mark of it, but Savicki keeps hold of the ball. Out to Taranto. They opt to play it safe, play backwards. And a run by Medwin Stimmy, but comes up with the ball. Prakash looking for the cross. Takeen was the target, but Pryor's done so well. Papadopoulos! She scored her main and only goal so far in the Liberty A-League against the Jets last time these two sides played each other. It's always great when players back themselves, they get themselves into certain positions here. We can see Ivani Prakash here looking for Hannah Keane in those dangerous areas, just floating that ball into, into the box. And Papadopoulos looks to do, hit that first time. And just unfortunate, she, she doesn't get her body over, over the ball there to be able to keep that ball down. Stolen by Haban. Of 
course, as it stands at the moment, Sydney sitting on 36 points with a game in hand thanks to that win over Wellington in New Zealand earlier today. Western United, 35 points. Still sitting on 11 wins though, so really crucial in the finals format for this league to make sure that those teams, not just goal difference, it's truly those wins that count. Cat Smith will definitely be looking to get three points out of this game. They want to be finishing top two in, in this competition, especially given the likes of Taranto out now with an ACL. We know that Chloe Legazzo is out with, with a hip injury, hoping to return back for, for finals football and very, very important for the Western United team moving forward in this competition. And they've also, of course, have Western Sydney Wanderers away and then Central Coast away, both teams who experienced wins this weekend. So, and looking to try and make finals as well. Ball being mainly played in the midfield at the moment. Keane trying to break free. Newcastle just pipping Weston for that possession start. Wilson. She was on that far side flank for the first half. Seems to have stayed there for the second as well. Really trying to match for speed Amy Medwin. We know how dangerous Amy Medwin can be. We've seen it, especially in this first half already. She's got plenty of energy there that she loves to get up and down that, that flank and what a great turn there by Hannah Keane and she just knows exactly where the goals is and she just backs us off from those from those distances and we've seen her score goals like that before in this league. And as we approach the hour mark, looking at the benches, both players have, you know, phenomenal talent with goal scoring records. Melina Ayers making her first appearance on the bench since twenty eighth of January. You know, we've seen her score goals upon goals in this league in recent years. Uh, and then, of course, Catherine Zimmerman, who scored the solitary goal last week for Western United against uh, Sydney. But, of course, she's had some experience with the Calder Western brand, of course, played for Calder in the NPL for several seasons. Catherine Zimmerman is definitely the one that I'm most excited to see get onto this pitch. We know that she's been returning from injury and she's been going through a long a long stint in her rehab. And I'm sure that Cat Smith is, is chasing this game. We can see her. We must have had it. In, in our halo here that Zimmerman was coming coming onto this pitch. She obviously isn't right yet to, to still play a good full 45 minutes, but she's definitely going to get a lot more minutes under her belt today. And we've seen what, what changes she made when she came on the pitch last weekend. I'm sure she's going to be doing the same and she'll be definitely re be raring to go. And Kiwa Hayata takes her leave. Catherine Zimmerman comes on. 40 seconds appearance in the league. 15 goals to her name. Only 34 minutes so far this season, but massive attacking threat for Weston. It's our first substitution of the game as well. Prakash trying to get through players, wins the foul. Lots of chatter from the crowds. Great to hear them in full voice this afternoon. It sure is. And it's a big foul here by Mindy Balvieri on, on Ivani Prakash. But you've got to give credit to the youngster. She's done really well in the middle of the park today for Western United. She's putting her body on the line. She's making those forward runs. She's getting herself in great positions in the box. And those recovery runs to get behind the ball. She's been, she's been fantastic today for Western United. Here comes Catherine Zimmerman. Herman plays the ball off her feet. The Swiss international has two caps for the national team. Played the most minutes of any outfield player for the Jets so far this season. Right behind her is Lauren Allen. Long ball over the top. Bauman first to it. Papadopoulos 
Intercepted by Vandis. Western throw in an increasingly dangerous area. Taranto does her best to keep the ball in play, even though she doesn't keep her feet. Prakash on the ground as well. Avani Prakash goes for the shot, flashes wide across the face of the goal. Ball still in play. So Vicky finds Keane. Zimmerman, what can she do here? Off balance with Zivicki, couldn't keep a hold of the ball. Newcastle looking to advance, but the press is always on. Taranto with the clearance, with the shot. In the end, it will be a goal kick for the Jets. How well has Avani Prakash done here to win her battle here? She's gotten on the ball. She's, she gets a shot off on target. She's just been everywhere in this game. And it's just great to see her energy and her willingness to want to get into those great positions. And it was just unfortunate that the girls couldn't get more from that. Bolden doing her best not to not go for the advertising. Slowly advancing down the field are the Jets. 11 shots to Western, eight for Newcastle. Western just steadily increasing this number the more the game's gone on. 64% shooting accuracy to 38% for the Jets. It's great to th see these numbers increasing for Western United. They've started the second half quite strong and have had plenty of opportunities as well. Serena Bolden goes for the shot, but nothing too much to danger Alyssa Del Oste. That's a bit of a tough angle there for Serena Bolden to be able to put that one into the back of the net, especially with her, her left foot there. She's closed her angle off, but she's probably looked up into the box. She's only got one play there, and she probably thought, why not back myself from here and, and give it a shot? Restart off to the offside. Long ball. Bolden with the run, but Sen headed it away. Papadopoulos just dancing through players. Medwin just couldn't keep the ball in play. Great as well to see the Western Core sign in the stands. Great support they've been for Western United since. Their active started with the team last season. and forth the ball goes but out of play Delfina Shakespeare you're pointing exactly where this ball needs to be taken Barbieri takes the deep breath. Nothing to come of it for the Newcastle Jets. You can just see here how important Serena Bolden is for this Newcastle Jet, just even off the pitch, the way she's setting up the players when she's not on the ball, she's looking to set everyone up, making sure everyone knows their roles and their responsibilities. Tyler J. Vanish, I think it down. Zimmerman wins a valuable corner in the end for Weston.
Tyler Vlanich there with her two hands in the air, making sure that the whole team knows exactly what's going on so everybody can set themselves up. And two great targets there in the box in Zimmerman and Hannah Keen, which we both know, Georgia, that they're absolutely dangerous in the in that in those areas. Vlanich rising with Taranto. Ball still in play in the end off the feet of Keane, but really Vlanich had to adjust for the wind. You could see how much it was blowing with that corner flag. Getting the timing right isn't easy in normal conditions, let alone in that windy conditions to be able to time that that run and time the, the action of how you're going to be able to meet that ball and Hoven. Delightful ball into Barbieri. Barbieri couldn't make the most of it in the end, but definitely gets a corner. Delightful delivery. Great ball in there by Sophie Hoven. The weight, the way she's weighted this pass in behind Alana Cern there. I don't think Mindy Barbieri was actually expecting that. Just her touch was a little bit unfortunate, but at least they've gained the corner here and gives them another opportunity. Barbieri to stand over the ball. Lots of commotion in the box. Barbieri she has the short option near as well. Can go long, lots of height there. Barbieri. Bolden in the back of the net. Who else but Serena Bolden? She makes it three for the Jets. What a beautiful header there by Serena Bolden. You can't leave her unmarked in the box. She's so dangerous. She knows exactly where the goal is. And we've got to give credit to the ball by Mindy Barbieri. What a beautiful weighted ball it was there in a perfect position there for Serena Bolden that gets her head on the back of that and just puts it into the back of the net and takes a Newcastle Jet in front here. Massive moment there for the Jets. 3-1, now the scoreline. Jets are completely in control of this game. Setting up for a game like this and knowing how dangerous Serena Bolden is in the box. He'll be making sure that we're man marking her or making sure that there's one or two players that's making sure that she cannot get anything in that box. and. You can't allow her that time and space in those dangerous areas because we know that she will be able to put that ball into the back of the net. And a mammoth task for Weston to now overcome to try and take home all the points in their first ever game here in Tarni, Newcastle, knowing how much do or die this game is for their finals hopes, doing everything they can. Newcastle trying to go forward. Barbieri spots Hoban by herself. Clash of bodies in the end. Copas Brown, the ball just flashes past her feet. Bolden. But just not enough on towards the run of Barbieri. Papadopoulos there first. Barbieri from range. Doesn't trouble Dallas stay too much. Zimmerman. Trying to find Kane. Here comes Catherine Zimmerman. Delightful effort, but strong save by Nino in the end.
great turn here by Keane and great little ball in there for Zimmerman. Gets herself into a great position there to be able to hit that shot off on target and great little pick up there by, by Nino. And of course, you know, Bolden sitting second at the moment in terms of highest goal scorers, 12 to Michelle Heyman's 14. Getting edging closer and closer. And if you know their season continues the way it has been going the past couple of weeks, minus that Melbourne City loss, potential for a new golden boot holder by the end of the season. And of course, Hannah Keane in this game just hasn't had potentially some of the service that she's come to expect as of late, sitting on nine goals for the season. Still a very great output from her. Prakash. Look to the passes. Newcastle were leading at half time, but now Western have just come back into it 254 to 246. Passing accuracy quite similar as well 65% for Western, 68 for Newcastle. Newcastle trying to push forward once more. Last ditch defending, working well for Western. And it will be a substitution. for Western United. Ivani Prakash in her first start comes off, unable to get that first goal in the Liberty A-League. Emma Robers will make her way onto the pitch. Ivani should be very proud of her performance this afternoon. We all know anyone that's played 90 minutes after not being a regular starter is always tough on the body. And you can see there, she's just stretching out her calves and it's a, it's a big, big ask to get her to play these 70 minutes and I think she's done really, really well and she should be very proud of her performance this afternoon. You know, only recently 17 years of age as well, so a very, very bright future in front of her. Had that disallowed goal in her debut against City, you know, was it offside, but, you know, very, very exciting player of the future with great technical ability. Absolutely. If you speak to any footballer and you ask him about the number one thing that they had out of their footballing career, it's definitely one of them is sacrifice and resilience. And that's something that Ivani Prakash has definitely got. She's moved across states to be able to get her opportunity to sign a scholarship deal with Western United. And she's reaped the rewards of hard work and determination and just that true never say die attitude to be able to, you know, be congratulated today with a start. In a, in a great team of Western United and to be able to push out a 70 minute performance like she did today is wonderful to see. Yeah, and of course, a lot of stuff talking about, you know, how she's moved to Tani since she's come here. So her parents are very glad that it's only a five minute drive now to this ground. They sure will be. She's a Tani local now and I'm sure they moved to, to that facility or that, that suburb knowing that they were gonna move to that facility. And it's great to see her in that local suburb and it's great for the, for the youngsters of Tarnit to be able to see some Western United talent in the local local shopping centres. Vanich, high delivery. Another corner comes off the back of Hoban. Vanich trying to battle the wind with this delivery. Robers almost gets ahead to it. Cleared away in the end by the Jets. It's not easy trying to deliver those balls in these conditions. And you can see Vladinch has done her absolute best of trying to get that ball into a dangerous area but what happens is when the wind starts to hold it up it starts to lose a little bit of that that zip on the ball where players are looking to meet meet that ball in, in the box in those dangerous areas and sometimes you've got to change it up given the conditions that we're seeing and the first substitution for the jets goal scorer of that third goal serena bolden coming off and a very familiar face for many melbournians here today Melina Ayres coming onto the pitch for her first minute since January. That's great to see Melina Ayres 
back on the pitch again. We know exactly what she's got. And here a replay of the goal. Serena Bolden, I just love her celebrations. I wish I could take that energy with me to the gym when I go weekly and try and get a bit of motivation. But the way she celebrates goals is, is something else. And the passion, the pure passion that she brings to this league and to this team, it's honestly, it's rubbed off on the Newcastle Jets. And you can see that the way that they've been playing, they just play on another level when Serena Bolden's on the pitch. Absolutely. You could see it last year as well with Western Sydney. You know, she only scored one goal, which surprised me because what she did when they uh, came to that team in terms of energy and goal scored as a collective was huge. But back to the game at hand here. Melina Ayres, you know, known goal scorer with Melbourne Victory for many and for many seasons. Also started at City, 30 goals to her name as within the league. One, just one for the season so far, but getting some valuable minutes. It's unfortunate for the Melina Ayres that she has had a long run in injuries because she's a fantastic talent. We know when she is fit and healthy and she is on the, on the pitch, we know that she's, she's a great goal scorer. She can assist in many ways. She's potent in front of goal. The way that she can hold up play, the way that she, she strikes the ball, she's got so many great attributes, and it's great to see her back at the, at, on the pitch at this stage. But we also, for Newcastle Jets' sake, we need to keep her on the pitch and keep her fit and healthy. It also speaks to the quality that the Jets have this season, that they can take off a player like Serena Bolden and bring on a player like Melina Ayres. So great recruitment from them to have such talent. Weston. Looking forward, Keane, trying to get onto the ball. Always dangerous in the press as soon as they lose possession as well. Dundas to Ayres. Over the top, Hoban now there for the run. Matt Ma just able to win the foot race. And of course, talking about that talent that Newcastle Jets have, they're of course missing a couple of players because they've been in young Matilda's duty. Notably, Lara Gooch scored the winner yesterday. Catherine Zimmerman going for the shot, just ball loose. And Nino in the end, able to hold on to it. But of course, you know, a player like her, a very exciting young talent for the Jets, but scored the winner to secure Australia the bronze medal at the under 20s Asian Cup. A great young talent in Lara Gooch. I think she's been fantastic for the Newcastle Jets this season. She's a, an emerging talent. Last season, she was playing in the Newcastle NPL. This season, playing for the Newcastle Jets and also on the world stage and scoring that goal to secure the win for the young Matildas that, that come third in the Asian Cup. Just a fantastic way to see these youngsters be able to be recognised and, and get that opportunity to play on the world stage. And absolutely, if you loved Matildas and you love the Liberty A-League, you should be watching the young Matildas. All but one of those players are regulars in the A-League. It's just a fantastic way to see the upcoming talent who would undoubtedly star for our national team in future years. Flanich with the corner. Robers look to be the target. Cleared in the end. on the run. Hoban, look to the final third entries. 56 for Weston, 51 for Newcastle. Still relatively even. It's just who can be more clinical in that attacking third. And Newcastle currently leading the way. You can see here with Vlanic persisting to play that ball into the mixer there and the wind, it's holding it up. They're not getting the, the delivery that they need there and there's numbers in and around Nino there just trying to put her off, but they clear it away again. I'd like to see Vlanic change it up a little bit, maybe look for a short corner, maybe look to for a little bit of a different delivery. And with the way that, uh, besides the corners, where else 
Westner approaching that final third, should they be trying to look for the shorter option as well, do you think? You need to change up what you're doing when you when you enter in the final third. You can't be predictable in your play. Again, Vlanich has taken these two or three corners now. You can see that the wind is holding up. And I understand on the training pitch, you're practicing these set pieces, you're pra practicing these corners, and but sometimes we need to play the game to the conditions that we're seeing in front of us. You know, coming out a fair way, Vlanich read the flight of the ball. The last day, apologies, coming out a long way. Newcastle now on the attack. Copus Brown. Keane went down with a mighty yell. Looks just clipped the ankle from Bauman. Not one to usually stay down for too long, but definitely a stinger there at the very least. 100%. She's got her there on, on the left foot and she's just grabbed her and you can see the screens from Hannah Keane. That wouldn't have been that would have been wouldn't have been very nice on, on that one. Not one to miss games. You know, she went almost two and a half years without missing a game until early in January, right before Unite Round, where she missed her first game for a long time. Otherwise, she could be have featured in every single Western game they've had so far. Her and uh, Alana Stern, the only two players to have played in 39 out of 40 games. Robers with an attempted shot. And of course, for that challenge and Keane Bauman did go into the book, so quite a few yellows across the board today. An attempted shot there from Melina Ayres announcing her return. And the flag is up, so another look at that. Melina Ayres shot. That's exactly what Melina Ayres brings to this competition. She just has that eye for goal. She doesn't need to take that extra touch. She knows exactly where the goal is and she hits it from, from that distance. Dundas plays it off Saviki. Another substitution here. With Millen Holland Hammond coming on. And Sophie Herban coming off. Melon Hammond selected as a young Matilda in the squad last season for the December matches, signed with Perth, but was injured before the season started last year. Studying biomedicine at University of Newcastle, so quite the talent all around, not just on, but also off the pitch. Also looked like Alex Hoon made her way on. So we're having double doubles. Another double substitution this time for Weston. TJ Vlanich coming off. And Julia Sato coming on. And Amy Medwin, the sole goal scorer so far for Weston. Coming on. So plenty of changes for both teams. Some attacking, some defending. You know, seeing Julia Sato primarily as a fullback, but that may, might, and with Vlanish off, that, you know, potentially, usually we see one of them push up into that wing position, but Richard's coming on instead. Well, we have the Newcastle Jets just holding on to this 3 1 lead at the moment, and then you've got Western United on the other hand that's looking to push forward to get something out of this game.
Simon takes the quick throw. Robers out to Sardo. Wins a throw with her first proper involvement in the game. Result in a goal kick in the end for Newcastle. Back to a keeper, Yana Sato. Why oh, isn't an attacking threat? But she does come on the pitch. Rovers back out to Taranto. Rovers. Out wide to Richards. Savicki goes for the shot. Flashes wide in the end. Nino is there to pick it up. You can see here on the replay, a little bit of frustrations there by Savicki. She gets that ball and just tries her luck of just trying to wrap her body around it to try and get something on target there for the Western United team. They're leading in the shots today, but just haven't been able to make it count where it matters. Savicki. Just a missed time run. Western United really leading those penalty area entries, 31 to just 12 for Newcastle, almost three times the amount. If the score stays the way it is, the Western United girls will be disappointed that they couldn't convert more of those chances and more of those entries into the box. Sato. Switching up play. comes Lucy Richards, played with Calder in the NPL, was rewarded with a performance with a contract at Weston. Melissa Taranto goes for the shot. Can let it fight. Sato tries to bring it down with her chest. Moves further away from the goal. Rivers out wide. Sato from distance decides to go for the strike. You can see here, Taranto, she does really well to get herself into that position, tries to get that ball in behind the Newcastle Jets defence and just can't get numbers in and around it, gets something, something on it there in the box. Ma. You can hear the impending footsteps of Hammond. Taranto out wide to Papadopoulos. He must be relishing the shade being on her side this half of the game. Taranto loads up the boot. Headed by Zimmerman. Feet flying everywhere in the box. And Ma from distance. Sides to go for a shot. She does. There wasn't much much else on. She's looking to put it back into those dangerous areas. But Newcastle Jets is doing great in this situation. They're just fighting off these battles here by Western United. Western United keep coming at them. And Newcastle Jets is doing well to really hold on to these three points here. Sardo. 
Sato to Rovers. Weston continue just peppering towards goal. Was it a cross in the end from Sato? Not too much trouble for Nino, and she'll make the most of trying to eat up as many seconds as she can here. You can see that's exactly what Nino is doing. She's pushing her team up. She's taking her time. She's going long, trying to fight off this pressure from Western United. Hammond to Copas Brown. That long ball over the top. Her run was on from Dundas. And Melina Ayres trying to break through CERN. At the very least, win herself a throw in or a corner. Throw in the end for a team. Looking back to the ladder and what this means in the long term. See another change with Josie Allen coming on. Both teams really emptying the bench today. Mindy Barbieri coming off after a fine performance. Brian Campbell would definitely be winding down this clock here and Mindy Barbieri on the run here knowing that she's already on a yellow card. She doesn't want to jeopardize anything going into the next game. And Josie Allen, we've seen her in four appearances so far this season, but only eight minutes, four minutes of time added on in this game. So she'll get to add a little bit more extra to her tally so far in the Liberty A-League. She sure does, and it's great to see another Jets Academy product be able to feature here in the Liberty A-League. It's what this league is all about, and it's great to see that the Newcastle Jets are one of the few teams that do have their own academy that they can start to produce and look at at ways that they can implement and start to integrate the, the academy products and the academy teams with, with the Liberty A-League teams as well. So it's something that we need to strive with all our all our teams in the Liberty A-League to make sure that they all have academies up and running in the next couple of years because it's very, very important not only to our Liberty A-League but also to our youngsters, especially coming through on the international stage. Hammond. By CERN, Papadopoulos now on the ball. Davis thought she won the throw. Toronto just running in to Zimmerman. Weston still keep a hold of the ball. Long delivery in. And Sato tried to judge the bounce before she wound up and had the shot. Papadopoulos straight across the face of goals. Weston still in it. Sato. It's great to see West United not taking their foot off the pedal, even though given the, what the scoreline is at the moment, they're still looking to push forward. They're still looking to find another goal in this match and trying to take it all the way to, to that last second. Melina Ayres playing it in for Hammond. Marge is very content to let it slide. But of course, as it stands in the final minutes of this game, Sydney go top of the ladder on this result. Just two home and away rounds left, but of course, quite a few teams still having to play catch up. Sydney, one of them. Could this result be a dent in Western United's hopes for a Premier's plate this season? We can't write them off just yet. And it's a fantastic match between both of these teams. They've been two great teams in this season, but it's great for the Newcastle Jets. It's also that that home run in the next next couple of weeks now in these last two rounds that 
everybody's going to be fighting for that that top six spot just makes everything really really exciting in this competition of course they mathematically can still make it they'll just need perfect results and for some results to fall their way as well Cern, keen to keep play underway. Oh, the whistle from Georgia Diridello for the foul. And a yellow card going to Emma Dundas. Sato through the center. Newcastle content to play the ball amongst themselves. And Georgia Girardello puts the game to its end. And for the first ever game here at the regional football facility in Tarnit, Weston go down 3-1 to the Newcastle Jets after a fine performance from the Jets. The Newcastle Jets have spoiled the party here for Western United at their home ground in Tarnit, but they've still got plenty to play for Western United and the Newcastle Jets, but it was a great, great game by both sides. And as it stands at the end of full time, it is Western United one, Newcastle Jets three. And let's have a look at the goals that made up this game. Some great goals here by the Newcastle Jets. A fantastic ball in here by Serena Bolden and a beautiful finish there by Libby Copas-Brown. Technique was on point there, but the delivery was even better from Serena Bolden.